This is the Hasselblad 907X with a brand new 100 megapixel medium format sensor. The design of this camera is beautiful and the images out of a 100 megapixel sensor are just ridiculous. But this camera does not come at a small price tag. And so today I wanna to take a look at this thing, talk about its crazy form factor, and of course go out and take a lot of photos with this thing. I don't typically review digital cameras on this channel and I don't typically get that excited by a spec sheet, but this camera in its form factor and its design is so closely related to some of the analog medium format cameras that I spend most of my time working with that when Hasselblad reached out and asked if I wanted to check this thing out, I couldn't turn it down. Now, just to get this out of the way, this video is not sponsored by Hasselblad. Although they did send over this camera, all of the opinions in this video are my own. They did not tell me what to say about this camera. I'm just gonna share my personal experience with it, my time shooting with it. We're gonna take a look around this thing because it is an incredibly unique digital camera. And honestly, I'm a fan. So to start, I just wanna break down this camera into its four pieces and tell you about each of them and why this design is so unique and different to anything I've seen before. So I'll start by unscrewing this here from the bottom of the camera to make things a little more simple. This is simply an extra grip with a couple of control dials, a shutter button, and some menu buttons on the top. This makes the camera a lot more usable in my opinion. It is a separate piece and detaches from the camera. So we've now made it even smaller, especially if you take this lens hood off. This thing is pocketable. What other medium format 100 megapixel camera can you fit into a jacket pocket? I don't know. The most exciting part about this camera is easily the 100 megapixel back. This is also kind of the entire interface of the camera. So it does have a screen here. You turn it on with a button here. It's also got your battery slot on the side and a port for an extra SD card. Now the big party trick of this Hasselblad is that this back is removable. Here it is. This back might look familiar and that's because you can mount this onto Hasselblad's older analog medium format film bodies. So while this is its own separate camera, this back can also be used to adapt older medium format cameras and turn them into kind of an analog experience with a 100 megapixel digital sensor. Pretty insane and it just clips right onto the back of this thing as well to be a dedicated digital camera with autofocus and all the modern features. Now let's talk about the rest of the camera which looks incredibly silly without the digital back attached. This little piece of metal here is what they call the actual camera body. You attach the lens at the front and the digital back at the back, and it looks ridiculous just holding it like this. This is not what you think of when you think of a camera body, but it does have a little dial at the front here and a shutter button, as well as just a lens release button. Moving on to the lens, this is a 55 millimeter lens, and this is kind of a good normal focal length for this system. Just in putting this back together, I will say one of the things you're paying for with this camera is the design. All the materials are such high quality and the design is beautiful. That's part of what you're paying for with a Hasselblad compared to maybe a 100 megapixel Fuji camera. I'm gonna spend most of my time with this camera outside taking a lot of photos with it. And I think I have one project specifically that this camera is very suitable for, which is my series of freeway landscape photos that I've been making. I've been chipping away at this set of photos for the last couple of years. I've tried shooting it on medium format film in the past and I've also done four by five film. So I think a 100 megapixel medium format camera could be an interesting fit. And today we're gonna go out and take a lot of photos with this thing so that the images can speak for themselves and so that you can see what the detail, quality, and color of images out of a camera at this price tag look like.
5 a.m. here in Los Angeles. It's a really cold, windy morning, and I'm back at a spot that I photographed in my 4x5 video. I figured what better way to start taking photos with this camera than to revisit some old freeway spots for this project. And then we'll go on to find some new spots later on once I'm a little more comfortable with this thing. But for now, I'm gonna try and re-photograph this view of the two freeway. All right, let's turn this thing on. And I'm just working with the back of the screen here, which is not something I'm used to. Let's bracket this. Two stops under, normal. And maybe two stops over. Oh, that's a 22 second exposure, wow. So there it is. Is that it already? It's really that simple? It's only 30 minutes after. I went to take that liquor store shot really quick that you just saw, but the light just got like 10 times more interesting. It's a really nice little bit of blue hour and some clouds really popped up over the mountains in the distance. So I absolutely want to reshoot this. So I came back to the same spot once again, and I feel like that's how this freeway project goes. It's, it's been all about revisiting the same places over and over and over, just in all kinds of different light. And then sometimes like this, you just get that one very special moment where it just really works. I'm gonna turn on the Hasselblad here and uh, try to do it again. Wow, this is gorgeous. This is what it's all about right here. As you can tell by the sky, the sun is gonna rise pretty soon. And I do wanna try and hit one more spot, so I'm just gonna double check this over. I think we'll just keep moving. This looks good though. I need to get a camping chair or something and just go to one spot and just stay there the whole morning. All right, I had to make a quick little stop here for this liquor store and a pest control building over here that is quite old and beautiful. Um, and it's got the freeways behind it. The liquor store has the freeways behind it too, but I'm not really sure if that became clear in the image, but oh my gosh, this shot right here. Here it goes. This is a beautiful shot. I like that you can just see Paramount. The building is gorgeous and the freeways are just crossing over like crazy behind it. It's starting to get a little busier. People are waking up and I'm still trying to take photos. What's up with that? This looks incredible. The light this morning is actually really, really nice. I was not expecting this. Easy. I made it to my next spot, and honestly, this is the one I was most excited about. I've shot this before in quite a gloomy overcast setting, but this sunrise is just looking too beautiful. So let's take a shot here. Wow. I gotta be quick, cause the sun's gonna come up, and I don't really want any direct light in this photo. Wow, it looks so good right now.
think I'm going to head home, have some coffee, sit through the first round of these files and just see what they look like and uh, come back again and shoot more photos. As you can tell, it's day two. It's once again a beautiful morning here in Los Angeles. And I'm at a car park that has a really nice view. This has been one of my favorite spots to photograph for this project. And I've come here probably five times so far. It might be one of the most expensive parking decks in downtown, but it's absolutely worth it. It looks like it's a beautiful, clear morning. So we're gonna take some photos and let's get right to it because I'm a little later than I would have liked to have been. This really is such a cool spot because you've got Union Station right there and there's a train that crosses right over the highway. And then down this way is an entirely different shot. It's just mind blowing. And the mountains are in the background. This light is perfect. I need to hurry up. Oh wow, it looks beautiful. There it goes. Woo! Here's kind of the composition I'm working with. I don't think I'm gonna bracket this one, but I will set it to self timer. And at F19, we're getting one second of exposure now, which should blur some of the cars and leave some of them still. Could be nice. There it is. It's that easy. <laughs> Man, digital. Who would have thought? Here we go, one more shot. Double check my focus, it looks good. Sky does look a little blown out, so I'm gonna underexpose. And so right away, I can see on the back of the screen, that's what the photo looks like. I can see the motion blur of the cars. I can see that everything is in focus. Look at how sharp that is, that signal ahead sign way in there is crispy. That's crazy. I'm gonna see if there's a cool shot to be had over this way. That's unexpected. Let me take one more shot of this side. I'm gonna see if I can walk over there and get a photo of that fire from a distance because it looks pretty nuts. Maybe with this lamp in it too. Okay, here it goes. Half a second, self timer. Wow, the fire is actually almost out already, which is kind of impressive. Well, the sun is coming up over the horizon. I think it's been another successful morning. This was my Christmas gift as a coffee mug that keeps your coffee hot. It's been like an hour. I want to summarize my thoughts on this thing real quick. Obviously, I did not pay $14,000 for this camera. So from that perspective, it's hard to complain. I think if I paid $14,000, I might be a little more critical, but you know, I didn't pay for this camera. So take that as you will. With that being said, my favorite thing about this camera has been the form factor. This grip, this screen on the back that flips out and just kind of a camera that resembles the older medium format cameras that I'm used to using like an RZ67 or even a traditional Hasselblad if that's what you like taking photos with, this feels quite similar. And although it doesn't have the mirror slap and the kind of mechanical aspects of those cameras, just the shape reminds me a lot of it and it's really fun to use for a digital camera. I feel like traditionally digital camera design is quite uninspired and it's looked the same for like 20 years, but Hasselblad has made something that is just so different. 
think the images speak for themselves, especially the detail in them. It just gets ridiculous how far you can zoom in. My medium format film cameras are not going anywhere for me. I'm gonna keep my Mamiya 7 and keep shooting that thing for as long as I can and as long as film is around. But with that being said, this camera is certainly the closest experience to an analog camera that I've had as far as digital goes. I really enjoy shooting with it. It feels incredible in the hand and the images out of it are just beautiful. I don't think anything will ever replace the dark room for me and the analog experience, but this certainly comes pretty close. The biggest downside of this camera and really the only thing I have to say that I do not like about it is of course the price point. It is massive. It is the price of a nice used Honda Civic. I will say this is not a necessity though. This feels like a luxury. I certainly don't have $14,000 to spend on a camera like this. I'd probably buy more Volvos, but it is the best feeling and the best performing digital camera I've ever used. The build quality is certainly something that I find hard to compare to any other camera that I've ever used because it is just miles above them all and the user interface and experience is fantastic on this thing. I wanna say a huge thank you to Hasselblad for sending this out. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with, and I think the images out of it are just fantastic. That is gonna wrap it up for this video. Next week, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled analog program. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Hasselblad for sending this out. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.